And c can you not do that? You'll oh. blunt them. Ooh, do you hear that, lads? He says we'll blunt the knives. Hello, and welcome to the Second Breakfast Club. Hope you're having a wonderful day and an even better breakfast. Now, in today's video, we're doing a commander guide on good old Uncle Theo. Yep, what, in my opinion, is the best good commander in the game, hands down. He is a beast. And, in my opinion, <clears throat> the best way to use him is a little different than what most people run. Uh, I think the standard run for Theo is a, is a melee-based build. Um, but I actually run a range build, which is, in my opinion, super effective and can actually be a good counter to Theoden. Yep, Theoden is the counter to Theoden, but a range build Theoden is the counter. So, <clears throat> let's jump over to the game and I will show you exactly how to build your ranged Theo. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> we are looking at good old Uncle Theo here, and I have him, as you can see, at Respect 14, and he is level 50 currently. So that's what we're working with, and let's start with the gear you're going to want to use. So the first piece of gear that, uh, that we have here is the Mirkwood Bow. Now, the Mirkwood Bow <clears throat> is going to give you uh, Commander Might plus 24. Commander Speed plus 18 and Army Ranged Attack plus 3. Now that's the key to this build. You're focusing on boosting your ranged damage. Hence, it's a ranged build. Okay, and with this, with this bow, the uh, <coughs> the bonus trait, if you want to call it that, or skill, is going to be Elf Strength, which is Elves Allied Units Damage Dealt plus nine percent that's at max refined max strength okay um this this one also goes hand in hand with the other uh with this one ranged might it doesn't matter which one you use they're both gonna have the same effect maxed out allied range units damage dealt will also be plus nine percent so it doesn't matter uh it could be either one of these that you <coughs> you'd strengthen as far as what you can use if you don't have one of these, um, I mean, you can, you, in that case, you can go just the standard route of either switching it with the, the Cutlass and maybe do Melee Might, but you're not gonna get that, uh, that ranged bonus, anything ranged bonus from it. Um, <clears throat> and then on the other note there, as far as gold gear, if you can max out a gold piece of gear, uh, you can go with Reach of the Rittermark with, um, with, let me take a look here, with, where is it? Oh, I went by it. With this, Allied Mounted Units Damage Dealt, uh, currently plus 4%. Um, if you max that out, it'll give you a decent boost of 12% damage, and that damage will be included for the bow knights which is what you're going to run with this with this build um so you can use that if you have that uh, another weapon if you're you can max out the gold although i don't really suggest it because it goes much better on gilgalad uh would be this uh elven white knife uh you're gonna get uh the way i have it now at least you're gonna get well let's just show it maxed out so plus and maxed out it's gonna be plus 36 Commander Might, and then plus six Elves attack, which if you're using Bow Knights, you're going to get that bonus for the Elves, for those Bow Knights attack, which is good. Um, <clears throat> but again, this is, a, this is a very, very good weapon, and I'd suggest using it on Gilgalad as opposed to using it on Theo, who works perfectly fine with the Mirkwood Bow. Um, the next next piece of gear you're going to want to look at is your armor okay i'm using the ranger shroud which is giving me plus 22 percent uh, plus 22 to commander might plus 35 to commander speed and plus two to uh ranged attack for your army okay and if you max that out that's what it's going to give you plus 27 plus 42 and plus three so that's a big 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 for the damage for your bow knights really good 
I've yet to be able to uh, get it maxed out all the way, but in due time I will. And then for the uh, sub trait on this, in season four, while facing, it's, while it's good versus evil, this is what you want to run. In fact, this is what you want to run on most of your commanders if you can. This all allies burn, poison, and focus damage received negative. I have it currently up to 15%, and I believe it maxes out at 30%. You want this on on him, on any of your commanders, really. Great. That's a great sub trait to have on Gilgalad, for example. But we're focusing on Theoden here. And the reason you run that is because when you're facing evil, you're going to be coming up against a lot of those evil commanders who are going to be doing burn, poison, and focus damage. Um, like, you know, you have like Sauron and the Witch King, you know, etc. This, this goes great in countering the damage they're going to do to you. So, <clears throat> that's what you want to run. As far as uh, things you can run... Uh, and substitute for that if you don't have this uh, if you're looking for something purple um, I'd say the superior uh, Huberk with the fire protection is really good throw that on him and you'll be protected from at least fire damage at getting burnt you know uh, yeah you're missing out on the poison and focus but Witch King you know does a lot of burn you know a lot of a lot of the evil commanders do burn fire damage okay so you're not going to go wrong with using that uh that hillbrook uh it's not easy to get um which i understand i definitely have some personally lying around but uh and if you can't get that then obviously you can just go with the scouts mail you can't go wrong with that um moving on from there though we don't want to linger too long we have the horseman's helm uh, obviously, the, one of the best items you can use on a mounted commander. Um, here, maxed out, max refined. It's going to be plus 24 might for commander, commander speed plus 24, and army defense mounted units plus 15. Uh, and I have a, a sub trait of the mounted vigor, allied mounted units damage received negative um, 6%. Okay, this is great. Um, <clears throat> so, there are other, uh, for example, you could use a Trapper's Hood, which I do like the concept of using a Trapper's Hood. It's going to give you good speed, um, and it's going to give you plus three more to your ranged attack, which that could be really good and maybe worth me testing out. <clears throat> However, I do like the plus 15 for the mounted defense because part of the Part of the thing about using commander uh, using Theoden here as a range build is you're going to be using also um, for uh, cataphracts or swan knights, depending on depending on your race or the faction you're playing as. But most likely, at least you're going to be using cataphracts to absorb some of the damage uh, that you'll be taking, and having that extra defense is going to help out with that, um, <clears throat> as well as the 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 mounted vigor or even the range vigor helping you reduce any damage to your bow knights so either one of these could do really well uh, again i haven't tried this personally but i do like that plus three percent or plus three i mean and but uh, horseman's helm obviously really good as well um as far as uh as far as a gold piece of equipment you could substitute in there if you can max it out i would say is the hunter's guide um with aegeus uh, i don't have i don't have one of those unfortunately i've never actually gotten one uh would like to someday but uh, if we go down here we can take a look at it this this right here is what you want especially if you can max it out First four rounds, each army, each round, 100% chance to gain stun immunity and madness immunity. That's going to help out big time with some of these evil commanders. And even if you're going up against uh, a good good factions with him, that stun immunity for like, you know, going up against Gandalfs and stuff, that's great. Great to have. 
Um, so that that would be my the other thing I switched it out with. Oh, and plus I didn't even I didn't even go over it. But you're gonna get the the plus the plus the my plus focus, and again focusing on this right here, the army attack range plus one. I don't know what it strengthens to at, at its max. But I imagine whatever it is, maybe you know, one, I don't know, plus three at the end, maybe plus four. I don't know. Whatever it strengths and strengthens all the way up to will be pretty good. Um, go back over here again. And finally, you have your accessory. I'm running the Wizard's Fireworks, fully, fully upgraded and refined. Uh, it's given me plus 36 focus. And again, army attack range plus three. With ranged might giving me an additional 9% damage for my ranged units. Fantastic damage. Um, <clears throat> if you don't have this, uh, maybe use. You could use this here, the Harp of LaFlorian. Which is going to give you focus 36 and then army speed elves 15. Um, and then elf strength, elves allied units damage dealt plus 9%. Um, this is this is okay, but this is better. Because it's giving you that, that plus 3 there for the ranged attack, which is great. This, yeah, I mean it's not as good. Yeah, you're getting the speed. And you do, you still do get the nine percent uh, damage dealt, um, but Wizard Fireworks definitely better in this situation. Um, as far as a gold piece of gear, if you have that and you can max it out, I'd say the Lothlorien belt could be decent. Um, Lothlorien belt could be good. I think there's a, uh, I think on the belt, I'm not going to waste my time to go check right now, but I think on the belt, there is a uh, ranged might, or at least something similar, where it's going to give you like plus 12 to your damage, um, which is not bad, and you get the focus speed and uh, army speed for range, so. Uh, other than that, I'd say you go with, um, if you have it. I don't even know what all the uh, all the different sub traits are available for it, but that new piece of gear, the uh, Maris Reigns, I think it's called. Um, if we go over here. My bad. Clicked on the wrong thing. If we go over here, we can look at it in the chest here. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, there it is. Yeah, this. If you can get, the, if you have one of these and you can get this leveled up, I don't know what it maxes out to, and I don't know all the different effects, but uh, I have a feeling this is probably one of the best items, accessories you can get and put onto a commander like Theoden. It's going to be insane. I wish I had one of these so I could learn more about it. Um, but no, this this right here, really good at plus eight focus, uh, army attack mounted plus one, so you're getting that boost to your damage for your for all your mounted units to include those bow knights and even HP mounted units plus two. That's big. You know, the more health you have, the more sustainability you have in combat. And then again, I don't know what all the effects are. Um, I would like to see that myself. Um, moving on from there. Uh, yeah, that, that covers that pretty much. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna look at obviously is how to scale them that's big right so at r5 uh at level 50 this is how i'm doing it uh, you could have something different this is how i have him built uh, again i have him respect 14 so i have i have all the skills available and this is what i'm gonna go with okay um but if you're not at respect five then uh, we, I'll tell you what you should be putting into at least a little bit um, you should be focusing on. So I guess we'll start with Respect 1. If you're Respect 1, well, you don't have many options, obviously. You only have these first two, these first two here. 
but what you're gonna go want to max out first is gonna be Rohirrim and your amount of damage received okay and then in addition to that you can go into cleave I mean pretty much our one's easy you just max out all this if <laughs> as you're leveling up just max it all out it doesn't really matter that much um, if you are three you're gonna go Rohirrim you're gonna go into riding excellence scratch that my bad you're gonna go Rohirrim and then you're gonna go the arrowed leader okay you're gonna max these two out then you're gonna go into riding excellence and then and then you can go into flanking a little bit i don't like mounted combat personally it it doesn't sound good to me like the the idea of doing that extra damage does sound great but only at 20 percent it, it kind of it it feels like it it falls flat like you, you oh 20 percent chance of dealing an additional 10 percent and so on as it increases which it increases a decent amount but the likelihood of you getting that additional damage um, doesn't. So I don't I don't like skills that aren't guaranteed. I'd, I'd rather have skills that are guaranteed than skills that aren't guaranteed. You know what I mean? Maybe you don't know what I mean. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just don't like mounted combat that much for that reason. Uh, so again, max out Rohirrim, max out Arid Leader, Riding Excellence, and then you can put, from there, put whatever basically all right so moving on you have when you're at respect five that's when the theoden becomes really good because you have access to his entire skill tree right and here's how you want to do it pretty much the way what you see here is what you want to build into in my opinion again you might have different thoughts on how to how to skill him up and that's okay but <clears throat> Again, here's what we're maxing out first. We're going into Rohirrim, we're going into Arid Leader, and then Horse Master. Max these out, and then you can get into, uh, and honestly, maxing these out is pretty pretty simple. Um, you wanna drop one point here into Devour Protection, because you're gonna get that uh, that initiative, which is critical. And yeah, you get the, uh, the additional commander speed, but that's not that important. It's that initiative you want. That's that's what's good. Worth the one point. Okay, here you have Chaotic Retreat. Enemy units of defense is negative 35. That's great. That's going to make your hits do a lot more damage. Alright, and then of course, with Horse Master, Army Attack, Mounted Units plus 15, and Mounted Units HP, when maxed out, is an additional 5. Plus 5. That's great. And then, obviously, Arid Leader, every round, mounted unit, 75% chance of recovering, 45% HP, and each round you recover HP. That's great. That's guaranteed recovery, and a pretty, not 100%, but a pretty high chance of recovering 45% HP for your mounted units every round. That's decent. Again, not this that's only 20 percent me no likey okay and then obviously you have your mounted units damage received here um minus 14 percent with your rohirrim mounted units damage plus 9.6 upon inflicting damage effect modified by speed step up to three stacks up to the i can't even speak up to three stacks so stacks three times right, so finally after you have maxed out these three skills here, put one point into Vow Protection, seven into Chaotic Retreat, and seven into Riding Excellence, the remainder of your skills are going to go into Renewed and then Defensive Stance. Okay? Renewed is going to give you Commander and Allied Units at, at level six here, 40% chance of removing one random debuff. Which is decent. And defensive stance against one enemy targets deals 80% physical damage. One allied melee units next damage received 
negative 40% effect modified by might. Uh, so, I'll be honest, I don't really understand how, like, when it says the might stat modifies this. So, like, okay, what does that mean? I, I have no idea. It's going to modify this 4% by my might stat. Don't know what that means. If you can explain that to me, please do. Because I have no clue. It just sounds good, right? <laughs> uh, but no. Defensive stance is great, though. Because, again, your melee units, so your frontline troops that are going to be there, hopefully protecting your bow knights, are going to be able to absorb more damage or, or take less damage because of this, which is great. Um, and I, I can only hope if I get another, uh, if I get another, another respect level, I'll put my next point into defensive stance here to bring that up to three and so on and so forth, going back and forth between the two. To me, that's, that's all you need, I think. Okay. So now, troop combinations for Theoden. Here's how you want to run them. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple and self-explanatory. Uh, actually, let's go over to the actual army tab window, right? Can we do that? Oh, we can actually, right here, right here. So here's how you want to run them. In my opinion, this is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Okay, you want your bow knights. Here, look at that. All right, the damage I'm doing with the Bow Knights is 59 to 65 damage. Okay, that's great. With my equipment, I'm getting plus 8 with 15 plus bonus there as well. So, that's solid. HP is up to... Um, uh, if you see here, the base of these Bow Knights damage is 36 to 42. Look at that. <laughs> I am blowing that out of the water here for damage it's insane ha hp which <clears throat> depending on the equipment you have you can get even higher i got plus five right now which is pretty decent and defense from 31 um no plus bonus here but with equipment i'm getting 15 to their defense solid speeds unaffected and the siege damage unaffected obviously we don't care about that and they are maxed out at least for now with gold okay the next unit i'm putting in my uh, lineup here are the ram riders the ram riders are good and what i like about the ram riders especially in season four facing evil is what they added here this heat proof skin this burn damage received they're going to take less burn damage so when going up against commanders like the witch king you're going to deal dish out a bunch of burn damage you have that you know with the swan knights now this is what i'm running again if you're playing as rohan you're gonna throw in um i would throw in marshals maybe maybe substitute the marshals for the um ram riders because you're gonna want katas in there to absorb some damage right now like i was saying i have I have the Swan Knights, which has given me the first three rounds, self-defense, plus 100, and takes all damage from normal attacks on behalf of allies. So any damage that your Bow Knights will be taking from normal attacks, they're going to absorb for them. That's fantastic, because it helps keep your Bow Knights in the fight longer, and the more Bow Knights you have longer in the fight, the more damage they're going to deal throughout the fight. And then they obviously have the Mounted Trait, which is giving them damage received negative 10%. Solid stuff. Now, again, if you don't have, if you're not playing as Gondor and you don't have Swan Knights, I'm going to throw in, uh, oops, I'll be throwing in Katas instead. Come on. Well, I probably should have moved them into, uh, moved them into the city so I could easily just switch them out, huh? Get out of that. Again, so the, the key point here is running Bow Knights with all that additional range. Um, I'll show you right now a recent battle I had. Not that one. Those, not that one. Look at this battle with a Sauron. 
He's not the best Sauron. Not the worst either, though. He's got some gold equipment here. Giving him some decent boosts. That's not that great. This is useless for him. Except for the HP and the might. So that's just kind of silly to use. But, as you can see here, we pretty much won this exchange. Which is pretty hard to do with these Saurons, honestly. They're pretty powerful. But if we look at here, I'm getting 190,000 damage from my Bow Knights. That's pretty solid. But they can do even better if I can pull up some other reports. Okay, so I'll just show this real quick. Um, this is a screenshot from uh, an older report of mine. Um, and as you can see, uh, I don't even remember what I might have been level 50 at this at this point. All right, so at the time I was level 47 of this battle report, and you can see here um, that my bow knights did a whopping 218,000 damage. That's insane. Okay. And that's just one report here. And the second one, the Bow Knights did by themselves 247,378 damage. All right, this was on a second hit after they had already been hurt. My my uh, Swan Knights were pretty much gone. And same with my Ram Riders. They, they weren't there for the fight much longer. But the Bow Knights were able to clean up shop. In my opinion, I think that's really good. Now I'm gonna try to find an army real quick to go and hit for a fresh report. Maybe this guy, I think he just showed up there. So we're gonna we're gonna path over to him real fast and give him a good surprise. And we're gonna hit this guy, Super Looper Cal 33. Sorry, buddy, but I'm coming for you. So with the magic of editing, I'm going to speed this up and we'll be hitting him in no time. And with the magic of editing, we are about to hit this army here on this fort. We passed over and we're hitting now. So let's wait. Get the animation here and let's see how I do. You gotta be shitting me. There was no one in that fucking ball. Ah. Alright, with the magic of editing again, I will be back with another, hopefully, another army to hit. Fuck. Alright, welcome back. I've made it to another part of the map where I finally have an enemy I can go attack. And I know that there's gotta be at least an army in this. There's four right here, and they're defending the tile. So, it's a pretty good chance that there's actually an army here ready to defend. So I'm gonna send Theo over here. And we're gonna hit this. And it's still gonna be another minute and 40 seconds. So, movie magic. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna be hitting this tile in a few seconds now. And like I said, it's got three defenders. And also, just to acknowledge the fact, yes, I am wearing a different shirt now. Uh, I got changed earlier while waiting for Theo to get out of here. But he's about to hit, so let's watch and let's see how this goes. Boom, all right. I guess I sent two armies packing here. Let's check out the reports. All right, we have first report here against the shadow. Two 
took on 987 dead, 656 wounded. It's definitely a decent amount of troops hurt there. But I'd say it's a good matchup with the double T4s. And let's see my uh, troop damage here. So we have 224,581 damage put out by the Bow Knights here. With 35,000 by Theoden himself, 16,000 with the Swan Knights, and 36,869 from the um, Ram Riders here. Ooh. Excuse me. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> that's not bad with 20,000, just under 21,000 healing. Not too shabby, I'd say. Definitely won that, and even after taking that damage, was still enough to take down this level 31 Glasha. Wow. I haven't seen a Glasha in combat yet, but here he is. Interesting. All right, so it was enough to take down this second army here with much more, uh, with a lot less losses. Not too bad. Dealing 165,000 damage. Okay. Pretty good. And now there's no more Swan Knights and no more Ram Riders. Down to 2,100 Bow Knights, though. And then I hit the third army here. So with just the Bow Knights, with just Bow Knights, I was able to put a real good hurting on this Ugthak here. I mean, in, in the end, I did lose this, this battle, sort of. Um, but, I mean... With the way I was outnumbered here, I'd say I did a really good job here. The Bone Knights put in some work. 175,000 damage after already having after having no um, protection and already being weakened a little bit. I was still able to put up a real good fight here. So that's that's pretty good. Um, I am going to uh, pull him back though, so he doesn't. Uh, so we don't lose the rest of those troops in this conflict. Not too bad. And I'm just going to throw in a quick reinforce. Because I actually do want to now hit that tile again. And uh, take it for myself. I'm going to load up again. I'm going to take nine minutes or so. That's not going to be part of the video though. That's irrelevant. So as you can see though. Real good damage coming out from those bow knights. All right, I love this build. It's it's to me. I think it's so strong. It's so good, and it can be used against more. Like it can be used in more situations now, especially where you have that uh, that uh, ranger shroud with the resistance on it. My God, let me tell you, this is awesome. And also, like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, this ranged build Theo is a good counter to normal melee build Theos. Guys running the Reach of the Ritamark, boosting all melee units. If you're running all melee units, this is a good counter to an all melee Theoden. Um, so that's that's going to be it. I, that's all I have for this video right now. Uh, like I said, I did get changed, so I do have plans. I can't stick around and continue making this video any longer. So if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. If you like this video, if you think this build is cool, or if you think it sucks and I'm an idiot, let me know in the comments as well. <laughs> but either way, drop a like, and please, please, subscribe if you're watching this and you're not already. Uh, I'm at like 317 subscribers, I think, maybe. I want to get to 1,000. I'm hoping we can do it at some point that would be awesome so if you watch this video you like this video hit that like throw a comment down below whether i'm an idiot or not and subscribe to the channel for more thank you again for watching